Okay, so one thing, so I always start uh, talking uh, about energy impacts by saying, you know, if you ask conservationists like me and lots of colleagues whether they're in the zero forestry or whether they're um, working for other nonprofit conservation groups, what their top five challenges and concerns were, say, five years ago, energy would not have been really on anybody's list. If you ask people who work in conservation today what's on their list, probably most of them are going to have it in their top five, and most of them are probably going to have it in their top one or two. So energy development has been coming at a huge and rapid pace in Pennsylvania for a variety of reasons. And so um, we decided to try and get some sense of what's the scale and what's the geographic scope of future energy development in Pennsylvania, because so much of the energy development that's coming is new forms of energy that we haven't seen before. And so in order to get a sense of what the potential uh, impacts might be to habitats across the state, we actually have to look forward. Um, so we developed a project to develop projections of how new energy development could impact forest, fresh water, and rarer habitats so that we can shape strategies to avoid and minimize those impacts. And we're not looking at all energy types, we're looking at the energy types that we think have the most potential for land use change uh, over the next 20 years. And so the four kinds we've been looking at are Marcellus natural gas, uh, woody biomass, uh, wind, and then the transmission lines, whether they're electric lines or whether they're gas pipelines, that hook it all together and get all that energy to market. And I want to just recognize that we have just a fabulous analytical staff of about 12 people uh, from the Nature Conservancy, from the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy, and from Audubon. And that's the kind of uh, collaboration we had to have in a very short period in order to put together what you're about to see. Uh, so just a few things before I show you some of the results of this assessment. First of all, we're looking at the next 20 years. Um, we're assuming, because we're ecologists, we're not economists, um, that there's going to be stable and sufficient prices and capital investment. It's going to push steady growth of energy development over the next 20 years. We don't have the expertise to understand what kind of variations in commodity prices there might be. We understand how important that is, but we're just making the relatively straightforward assumption that there's going to be enough demand for energy that it's going to continue to grow in the next 20 years. And the recent trends that we've seen over, say, the last five years are really somewhat indicative of what's going to happen over the next uh, 20 years or so. Now, I always need to stress before showing the assessment is that we're not giving predictions. We're trying to share scenarios that frame kind of lower and higher levels of, of energy development that might happen in the future. So think of these as scenarios, not necessarily predictions. Um, and I also want to stress as well that we're really looking at habitat impacts. We're not necessarily looking at a range of other environmental impacts, things like water controls, water quality, and air quality. Those are really important. But we're looking at habitat impacts because we think there really hasn't been much attention to that issue uh, so far in discussions about energy development. So, first question we wanted to try and answer is how much energy might be coming? And so the question obviously is most driven by how many wells are there. And so we assume over the next 20 years something like 250 horizontal drill rigs will be working in Pennsylvania. It's over 100. Uh, five or ten or twenty right now, it's somewhere in that neighborhood, it's steadily climbing and expanding. If you assume that each of those rigs drill, drills about one well a month, um, times twenty years, the math isn't too complicated here to get about sixty thousand wells. If you look at what some other projections have been, I mean you see things from Terry Engelbert, for example, uh, you know, he's saying maybe a hundred thousand, hundred and twenty thousand, but that's over the life cycle of all of Marcellus development, not necessarily twenty years, okay? Um, so how many well, Marcellus well pads will there be, which is really what's key to understand what the impacts on habitats could be. So the more wells on one pad means there's less of a spatial footprint across that landscape, right? So the more wells equals a lower impact scenario. The medium uh, is uh, obviously a medium, and the high is, is uh, uh, fewer wells uh, per pad. And so we chose 10 is the low, 6 is the medium, and, and 4 is as kind of a high impact scenario. And um, I'm, I'm not going to go into all the details about these different scenarios. Just suffice it to say that technically it's possible to do more than 10, but for a variety of reasons it often doesn't happen or is unlikely to happen in the future. Uh, the high scenario where they only have four wells per pad is probably not something you're going to see either, although in some places that